You in the rhythm section? That's because you're too white. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, if this is your very first time here at Set Free, there's a thing we call a fish card in your bulletin. If you would grab that and pull it out and fill it out and drop it in our chicken buckets when we take up the tithes and offerings, we'll get some more information to you. And all the rest of you Set Freeites that have already filled these out all the time, all you need to, all you need to do is listen to, me, listen to me real quick. If you have moved, okay, if you have a new address, it says right on there, update my new information. Please put that on there because when we send the newsletter out to you and if it comes back to us, every one of them that comes back to us costs us 57 cents. So please put in your new addresses on there and drop them in the bucket and we'll get your addresses changed in the thing, all right? Cool deal. Thank you for those of you that brought in snow shovels. Looks like we might need them here Monday. It's only going to be nine below Tuesday. Yeah, come on. It's November in Montana. Come on here. All right. 30 days through the New Testament. I still have some of these out. We, those of it that started with me were in Acts already. So if you want one of these, 30 days through the New Testament, raise your hand. Cowboy will throw one at you. There's one in the back for sure. Two right here. Okay. And we're doing, I think we're doing some water baptisms tonight. Did anybody come to be water baptized tonight? We do. Right on. Okay. So I will holler at you right before we go. There's a handicapped bathroom right over here that you guys can go and change in. And then they'll lead you right out in the back over here and away we go. Okay? Awesome deal. And to tell you this, we're going to be doing baptisms next Saturday also. We're going to be, kids club's going to be baptized and some kids. But if you need to be water baptized, we'll throw you in there with the kids. So come talk to me. All right? No, we got a swimming pool in the back back there. We're in good shape. All right. So where is... There they are. <laughs> Going to throw them under the bus. Did you warn them already? boy. This is Matt's sister and her boyfriend Dustin. This is Jess and Dustin. They're from Ohio and they come out here. They're only here for a couple days to visit him. So I'm going to throw you under the bus. You got to say something. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you didn't tell me this was going to happen. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm Jess, Matthew's sister, and I'm just very, very happy to be here, and I want to thank all of you for everything that you've done for him. I've seen such a huge change in him since he's been out here, and I can't thank you enough. Yeah. We should have waited till this week and had you get, come up here and give your testimony. Maybe we might have to do that again anyway. You know? And Leo, where's Leo? Come on up here, Leo, real quick. Leo just went to RLM Ministries in Idaho two weeks ago and went through the disciple shift thing. So I'm going to let him give a little shot on there. And then he's going to challenge you to something here as soon as he's done. Well, I know where he got the old say they're going to throw you under the bus. I think I wasn't only thrown under the bus, I ran over and drug around the block a couple times. But I'll tell you, the discipleship school is outstanding. It really gives you the deep meaning of who the Lord Jesus Christ really is and what he's asking of you, what he wants you to do. I think by the time I left out of there, I really felt the true meaning of what it is to walk with the goodness of God. With that, they teach you in groups. Uh, some of you probably know that I've been on the streets praying for people. I need some help. If any of you think that's your calling and you'd like to do that, I can meet with you afterwards and if we can work something out here with Set Free. Believe me, to do that, you have to have the mind of Christ. You remember when Christ told Peter, to get behind me, Satan, he didn't say it because he was a devil. It was because he wasn't thinking like Jesus was thinking.
And that's what he wanted him to do. And this is what we'll train you to do, is to transform your mind to actually think like Jesus and work like Jesus would work. We pray for blessings, we pray for healing, and we'll pray for miracles. It took a lot of guts to walk up to a person in a wheelchair, pray for him. Did we expect a miracle? I expect Jesus to do the miracle. It's amazing what comes out. We have, if any of you watch Sid Ross, nobody watches Sid Ross? Hey, bless your heart, girl. You know, she'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, with Bill Johnson down in the Bethel Church down in Redding, California, his main mission is strictly street ministry, healing, and miracles to the people. I'm going through that curriculum now, and I'll be going through the other one about his street ministry. And if those of you who want to join me, we will get the books. The videos will just make you sit down and cry. It'll really make you think where you're at in the life of Jesus. Thank you, brother, for all the help. <laughs> I only got one question. Leo, I only got one question. Have you read your name tag? Yeah. <laughs> All right, honey bunny. <laughs> All right, I just wanted to make sure you knew what you were wearing. All right. All right, cowboy, you're up. Check my name tag. I'm good. I'm good. All right, please join me in our set free pledge. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I won't look back or let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sidewalking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have to be right, recognized, praised, regarded, or recorded. I live by faith, walk by patience. My face is set, my gait is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions are few. My guide is reliable, my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, hired away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the presence of the enemy. I will not give up, shut up, let up, until I've stayed up, prayed up. I will give till I drop and preach till I know, and when he comes, and when he comes, my will be clear. <laughs> Uh, so, I hope everyone's having a very groovy time cruising through the New Testament. I just love doing that kind of reading. I love, I love, uh, you know, doing that many pages a day because things just pop out; they come to life, and that is the Word of God. <clears throat> so, I just want to. Uh, Hit John 8, 31, 32. Everyone should know this. If you abide in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen? That's just one of those liberating scriptures. And with that, we know that God is the owner of all things. And there were, we are just, you know, stewards and managers of all of his resources that he provides us so freely. And I got a couple other liberating uh, scriptures I just want to throw by, <clears throat> throw at you here. Job 41.11, whatever is under the whole heaven is mine. That's God's. Psalm 24.1, the earth is the Lord's and all it contains the world and those who dwell in it. Haggai 2.8 The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. 
And I love this one because I'm so thankful that for the gifts that God has given me. This is uh, Deuteronomy 8:18. 8, but you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who has given you power to make wealth. Thank you, Jesus. So if you'd bow your heads with me to bring in tonight's offering. Father God, Lord, I truly thank you. We thank you for all that you do for us so freely. Knowing that all things are yours, Lord, I pray that we celebrate that this evening as we give back to you. We want to thank you and praise you in all things. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All situations. Father, if we'd ever just turn it all over to you, man, our life would run a whole lot better. So I just pray the Holy Spirit just work in and amongst us, that we just surrender, surrender our lives, surrender our families, surrender our circumstances, surrender our money, surrender our jobs. Just give it all to you, Father God, and let you run it. Father, I know we got to take a step, and I know we have to make a move, but we don't want to move without your leadership and your guidance. So, Father, I just thank you tonight for all that you're doing in amongst us. Lead us, guide us, correct us when we need it, Father God. Help us just to keep running on that, that tightrope for you. I pray that tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, God's amazing bride, just hit it and away we go. Tuesday's Vets Day, Veterans Day. If you're a vet in here, would you stand up, please? Come on, we want to. I get a little emotional when... People disrespect the flag, and I go to baseball games or football games or basketball games, and uh, I just say it. Nincompoops won't take their hats off. I want to just go over and slap them. And you're a pastor, JT. Well, I'm just sorry. That's <laughs> that's why I'm going over and slap them. Say, you know, you need a little honor, a little respect for your country. All these guys that have died for you, men and women both that have served the country and died for you, and you're going to disrespect that. So don't, I, uh, yeah. Anyway, God is good. We still need to say God bless America. And, uh, you know, we, we just need to just stand up for righteousness. You know, we're, Christians got to quit backing up. You know, being, being loving and merciful doesn't mean you're a doormat. So you need to stand up for what God says. You don't have to stand up for what I say or what anybody else says, but stand up for what this says. If we stand up for righteousness and for what's right, you're going to get hammered. Hate to tell you, you're going to get hammered for it, but stand anyway. The Bible says after, after you've done everything to stand, stand therefore. And that's when you're all coated up with the armor of Jesus Christ and go into battle with the Lord and away you go. Amen? All right. All right. I'll get off of that. If I get talking about that, I'm stuck. Away we go. John chapter 15. 
Cowboy hit a verse tonight that I, I laugh every time I read through that here the other day. But I had a whole crew, my, she's not my real daughter, I call her, she's my adopted daughter, her and her husband and her kids, and I think Ten was with me, and Mom, or maybe it was Sky and Lexi, I can't remember, we had a whole bunch of us. Anyway, we were at Magic Mountain in California. Been there all day long, and if you know where Magic Mountain is, it is hot, it is up there. And we're riding this little tram trolley back to the, where the car is. Well, I have John 832 tattooed on my arm. And so we're sitting in this trolley, and I am just, I'm done for. And this girl across the thing says, oh, I see that you got scripture on your arm. What does John 832 say? I sat there, and I thought, I can't remember what John 832 says. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and I'm digging in the depths of my memory, trying to figure out what, and so I look at Autumn, and I said, Girlfriend, what does John 8.32 said? She goes, Dad, you're the pastor. And I'm like, oh, she just threw me under the bus. <laughs> anyway, those are one of those moments that you're thinking, oh, gosh, help me, Lord. And we, we didn't get it all figured out until we got back to the car. I had to go into the car and get the Bible out and open it up to find out what John 8.32 said. Anybody ever been there? Yes. So I'm not all by my lonesome? Yes. All right. <laughs> All right, John chapter 15, I'm going to read to you in the Amplified tonight. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Any branch in me, hold on here, I forgot something. Gino will shoot me. Got to get the, get the clock going here. Verse 2, any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts Away, trims off, takes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. How many of you are gardeners in here? Anybody like to garden? How many fruit trees? Anybody got fruit trees? So my whole side on my dad's family is all Italians. They all live in the Napa Valley. They all raise grapes and all that stuff. And if you ever show up at... Uncle Fred's house at a certain part of the season, and I can't remember what it all is, you'll go out there and walk through those vineyards, and those vineyards are look like they're butchered because they've pruned them all back. And it's like, man, how you get any grapes off of this stuff? Well, the more they prune it back, the sweeter the grapes will be. And sometimes you got to prune some stuff out of your life to make you a little sweeter. Was I talking to you? I was just going to say there's just no way. <laughs> How many of you know all of us have some rotten stuff in us? Anybody not here have any rotten stuff in them? Don't raise your oh, girlfriend. I'll throw you under the bus fast. <laughs> We've all got rotten stuff in us. And that's why God is constantly doing what? pruning stuff away from us. And the more we dig into the word, I love, you know, Cowboy says he loves going through this. I do too. There's more things just jump out at you as you're reading through the whole chapter, not just nitpicking verses here and grabbing a verse there, but you're reading the whole chapter through. And God can reach out and just shake your tree a little bit. Because who's the root of our foundation? Actually, it's God. God says right here, God's the main He's the vine. I, it messes me up, though, because I always look at it as the trunk. And then Jesus Christ is the... And then we're all the little things hanging off of there. And sometimes he's got to cut some of the little things off of us. Hello? Maybe some of you are having problems with your mouth. You use the F word a little bit too much. Maybe you use another word a little bit too much. You might even use the GD word in there. And out of all the cuss words, I can be around people cussing all day long, but when they say the GD word, I just, something happens to me. You know what I mean? But some of us need to get our mouth cleaned up. Maybe some of us got to get our actions pruned a little bit. Mike's back there raising his hand to everything. 
Jump in. But it makes us sweeter if we'll let him do it. Can you imagine one of those grapevines standing up and Fred comes to chop on one of those things and says, oh, no, don't touch me. But when Jesus steps into there to give us a little prune job, guess what? He never forces us to do anything that we don't want to do. Hello? Our God loves us enough to give us free choice. He'll never make you do anything you want to do. He, I think he, I don't know, praise the right word, but I think he really would love us to just stick a thing out there and say, okay, God, whatever. Do whatever you got to do. Take that piece of that out of there, out of my head. Anybody got any anger issues in here? Well, there we go. Monday nights, actually Monday afternoon, late afternoon, 5 o'clock, we have a wonderful anger management class downstairs, taught by the most angry man in the world that I know, Willie Raymond in the back, back there. He will help you with your issues. But it's not him, actually, that's helping you. You know what we're using? We're using God's word. God's word is what's going to change you. And guess what? To get a little rid of a little anger, you're going to need a little prune job. I wanted to get me a plant with a big old hacksaw thing up here tonight. But I couldn't find one. <laughs> I heard a story once in Florida that the oranges are the sweetest when the winter is the coldest. So if the trees get the shock a little bit when it gets so cold, they freeze a little, they don't really actually freeze, but they get so close to freezing, it puts them into shock a little bit. That's what brings out the sweetness of the oranges. Maybe some of us need a little shock job. Ever been hit with one of them things before? Cattle prods things? I'll tell you a stupid story one time. I used to work, I worked on a ranch for years. We're loading cows, and I got my face up against the side of the truck, and I'm reaching in, and I hit the side of the truck. <laughs> Guess who got that? <laughs> As I fell off the back of the chute, yelling, and, and this, is before, this is my BC days, I was saying I needed some pruning. They're all looking at me like, what is wrong with him? Oh my gosh, somebody just shocked me. Yeah, you stupid fool, that was you. You shocked yourself. <laughs> Some of us need to take a little prod right here. You know what I'm saying? And get some more of God's word into us. All right, let's keep reading. Verse 3, you are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given you, the teachings I have discussed with you. Dwell in me, talking about Jesus, dwell in Jesus, and I will dwell in you. Live in me, and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in, being vitally united to the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. What's that verse telling us? If we're not hooked into Jesus Christ... If we're not abiding in the vine, we're absolutely no good to nobody. Now, we might think we are, because some of us got a little bit of this, the world can't do without me, attitude. Well, I hate to tell you this, but we can all do without each other, but we can't do without Jesus. And we're not going to do anybody any good. You can give people advice all day long. Don, what's that saying you told me one time? I got it written down, but it's in my other Bible. Don't take advice from anybody. Say that one more time, real loud. So, how many of you guys are taking advice from people, but guess what? They ain't never going to have to deal with the consequences that you're going to deal with. But you're listening to them. Oh. Now let me go, I'm going to prod a little bit deeper into some of you. Some of you have been locked up, and the jailhouse stuff that you were getting, the advice that you were getting in there was teaching you to be a better criminal. 
Hello? A better drug addict, a better drug dealer, a better, ro a better everything, but it wasn't teaching you to be a better man or woman of God. Right? So why don't we get locked up with Jesus? Listen to this. Let's get locked up with Jesus and let's listen to what he's got. I'll bet you he'll give us a whole bunch more advice that'll keep you out of the joint, that'll keep you off the street, that'll keep you off. For, how many of you still, when the cop car goes by, you're all still? <laughs> or you're driving down the street, just mind your own business, you're doing the speed limit, everything's good, and a cop pulls in behind you. And all of a sudden you start sweating, oh God. You got the driver's license, you got insurance, you got light, plates on your car, are all good, all the stuff that you always used to never do before. But now you got it all good, but you're still, oh gosh. <laughs> I guess it's throw Willie under the bus tonight. Where's he at? There he is. <laughs> he does jail ministry. Sent him to a, was it a picnic, wasn't it? <laughs> It was with all the sheriffs and all the jailers and all that stuff. And now you got to remember, this boy was locked up for a while. Didn't like the cops. Didn't like jailers. Didn't like. And he's sitting. He's actually sitting eating with all of them. And one of them. This is before he got his poop in a group here too. This is one of them. Actually, bummed a cigarette from. Him. He calls me up. What have you done to me? <laughs> I'm like, well, bro. What are you talking about? Man, there's cops. There's jailers. There's and even one even bummed a cigarette from me. Am I right? Why do we freak out about that when we're doing it right? Stinking thinking. Are we ever going to get 100% straight? I don't think so. Not till we get to heaven. And those of us that have screwed things up so much, why does those things keep coming back up? Because the enemy knows which button to push. You got an anger issue? Well, let me push that. And somebody that knows buttons to push or those of you that know me, traffic. Somebody will just cut me off. Usually happens every Saturday. I don't know why that works. Or the guy sitting at the light here tonight or this afternoon. I was really good too. It turned green and it turned red and he didn't move. I'm sitting there. I'm talking out loud, but not really out loud, out loud. So you can hear, I'm like, dude, go. Come on. And I'm going to honk the horn. And it's like, no, don't honk the horn. All right. <laughs> so the light turns green again. And I can't take it no longer. And come on. <laughs> and this old man turns his, blink, turns his flashers on. Jinka, jinka, jinka. Now I got people behind me honking their horn at me now. Thank you, Jesus. And so the guy's waving me around. Come on, you gotta go around. All right, so I put my truck in reverse, and the guy behind me is going, Arr! So I rolled my window down, and I'm like, you gotta back up, dude. He can't hear me talking, but I'm talking to myself. You know, you ever done that to yourself? Dude, come on, you got to back up. And he's doing this at me. <laughs> now, I've been saved for almost 30 years. But Norm, there's still things that pop up. And you know, you just want to, you just want to give him a salute. With me? But thank God, I get slapped in the back of the head. What are you even thinking that for? I was like, come on, God, he won't back up. <laughs> now, am I the only one that ever does any of that stuff? No. Do you think I need a little pruning? Go ahead, you can answer, I'm with you. If my wife was sitting here, she'd be yelling amen all the time here. So don't think that you're the only one that's going through stuff. That's one of the traps that the enemy will get you in. You're the only one that thinks like that. 
You're the only one that wants to do stuff like that. And that's, even after I pull away, you're, I get this thought, you're a pastor, and you're thinking about flipping that guy off. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was. But I didn't. Am I just like you? I'm exactly like you. We're all human. We all got things that go through our brain. But we also have to be the one that lets Jesus do the pruning. The Holy Spirit's going to come into our lives and take some stuff off. If you got anger issues, and we all do, you know, the ones that I always say, anybody got anger issues in here? Go ahead, raise your hand. Anybody got any anger issues in here? Okay, the ones that ain't raising your hand, you probably need anger management more than any of us. Serious. Monday night, 5 o'clock, right downstairs, got a great Bible study going on. Anger management class. Come hang out. I got to get going here. I'm going to be in trouble. Verse 5. I'm the vine. You are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Do you think I was cut off from Jesus for a little bit there in the truck? Absolutely. Because it was all JT sitting in there. Come on. But when I get a little bit of, and sometimes the baseball, sometimes the 2 by 4 2 by 6 2 by 12 that's when the pruning comes along. And you know what? I've been asking God for a long time, how come I can't get rid of this stuff? Anybody been there? You got a thing in your life that just keeps coming back up all the time. And mine's the traffic thing. I mean, I had a couple summers ago, I had somebody cut me off on the motorcycle with my wife on behind me. I was chasing the car down the street and my wife leans up and says, and what are you going to do when you catch him? <laughs> well, I'm going to kick the door is what I'm thinking. She knew exactly what I was doing. What are you going to do when you catch him? Oh, <laughs> come on. So yours might not be anger. You might have some other issues going on in your life. Might be some of the things that you're watching. Might be some of the things that you're saying. Some other things that you're doing. I don't know any other way to say it than just, we got to just stop and let the Holy Spirit, let Jesus get a hold of us and give us a chop. And I promise you, it's going to hurt. You know, these guys, these preachers get up here and say, just turn it over to the Lord Jesus. <laughs> and everything's going to be all right. <laughs> That's a lie. Because when you do that, it is going to hurt in one way or another. But the, the great thing about it is, have you ever had something done where it hurt really bad, but in the long run it felt... Oh, man, when I had my hip done, man, I could barely walk. Come out of surgery, and I am in big pain. But now, today, it's like, whoo, man, I thank you, Jesus. But we don't like that little pain stuff. Because that's why we use the dope. That's why we use the booze. That's why we use the women, the men, whatever we did. Because we wanted to mask that stuff all the time. Hello. That's why we blow up. Because we're masking that thing. Some of you are the exact opposite. You just shut up. What's wrong? Nothing. You women are famous for this. <laughs> so what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. When my wife tells me that, I just turn and walk out of the room. Because we're done. Until nothing's over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I know that nothing is something big. Hello? So quit being, you either, I don't know why we can't balance ourselves out. That's one of the things with Christians. We need to, we need to get on the scale and get in here somewhere. Instead of we go from, whew, we go from this ditch, we're, we're awful over here, to we get in this ditch and then we're just so full of love, everything's good. Oh my God, Jesus is good. And then somebody pulls out in front of JT and JT goes back over here. 
And then I'm in this ditch over here for a while, and then I get a cut, cut I, I read a little bit, and then it's, oh, God's so good. I just love the Lord. Oh, you're so sweet. Huh? Come on. I think my angel gets dizzy once in a while. Man, dude, get off that seesaw. And if we just got in here a little bit, because I don't think we're ever going to get like this totally, permanently, until Jesus comes back. Now, there's some days I'm here for about two seconds. It's when I wake up, and then we go back there. Are you with me? So I'm going to close. Those of you who are going to get baptized, show them where they're going to change clothes at. Go on out, head on out that, in the back out there, and they'll show you how, where you're going to change and stuff, okay? So now I'm not going to literally throw you under the bus tonight, but I'm going to ask you some questions. I actually, I'm going to ask you one question. What's some of the things that we need to get pruned from? Come on. We're all, we're all us's in here. This is all set freeites. We all got problems. You wouldn't be at set free if you didn't have a problem. Amen. So what's some of the things we need prune from? Come on. Man, there got a whole bunch of them at one time. What? Prejudiced. Pride. Woo! Anybody got pride in here? Anybody got a problem with that? I'll rest you lying again. Here we go. See? Some of you need to be set free from lying. There we go. All right. What else we got? Anger. What'd you say? Depression. Okay? That's, that's huge. Guilt. Shame. You know what the enemy uses? Guilt and shame. You did it again. See, I told you, you're never going to get better. <sighs> you took that drink. You took that dough. You, you did that. You did, oh, ah, and the enemy just... You're never going to get better. And you walk out going, oh, yeah, I guess I'm just a no good scumbag. Instead of turning around and saying, you know what? I'm a child of God. Been set free through the power of Jesus Christ. Father, I for, ask you to forgive me for what I just did and what I said. And get right back up and punch the devil right square dead in the face with the word of God. Amen? What else? Resentment? Ooh. Envy. Anxiety. Jealousy. Je oh, ho, 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 ho. Ain't nobody judgmental around here, are they? Don't raise your hands because I won't call you liars again. <laughs> what is it? Offense. Offense. Arrogance. Arrogance. Pouting? Doubt. Oh, doubt. I doubt that doubt. <laughs> That's one of the sayings that I, I love the saying. Devil knocks on your door and comes in and says, I doubt that. And you just look at him and say, I doubt that doubt. Arrogance. What? Ooh. Sticks and stones, break my bones, the words never hurt me. There's a huge lie. What else we got? Gossip. Ain't nobody in here ever gossiped before. <laughs> Not in the last minute, yeah. What else we got? Come on. Self pity. Gluttony. What is it? Selfishness. Selfishness. Ouch. What is it? Complacency? Oh. Is it any, any of y'all fitting into any of this stuff? How about I just raise my hand on all of them? Because sometimes we're all in there in each and every one of them, aren't we? Are they back in there, Tim? You can't see in there? Not yet? All right. So let's do this. Let's bow our heads. As most of you know, you've been around here for a while, I'm kind of a picture guy. I, I picture things in my head. So take that piece of dead fruit that's hanging off you, whatever it is, the anger, the guilt, the shame, the complacency, the guilt, 
just whatever, all that stuff that we said, the anger issues. Just picture the Holy Spirit coming up with his loving shears and just trimming that off of you. And that falling to the ground. And Father, tonight I pray that as that thing hits the ground, we just leave it there. We don't allow the enemy to pick it back up and shove it back in our face. And if he does, we come against him in the name of Jesus, and we just rebuke that in Jesus' name. And thank you for setting us free tonight. Father, we all need the peace, we need the love, we need the comfort, the mercy, but we also need the correction that the Holy Spirit gives each and every one of us. And Father, that never feels good. But man, the outcome sure is great. So I pray that we're patient through that, patient through the process that it has to go through, that God can work in each and every one of our lives. And I'm just going to ask you with your eyes still closed, your head still bowed, if something's just going on in your gut tonight and you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior, tonight might be the night that you say, you know what, take my life, I'm ready to surrender, I want to give up and do whatever you want me to do. If you say that's me tonight, would you just raise your hand so I can pray with you tonight? Right on, kid. Right on, dear. Right on, sister. Right on, buddy. Anybody else? So why don't you all just stand up with me real quick. You four that raise your hand, jump up here real fast. I need one guy and three girls, please. Come on up here, Hap. Come on up here, dear. Right on. I'm missing one. There she comes. I got one guy somewhere. Come on, dude. Come on up here. I'm not going to. I'm going to come get you in this stuff. I need a lady right here. Miss Rainey, go grab this cow right here. Amen. Anybody else? Come on. Cool deal. This is awesome. You want to get your poop in a group? Now's the time, amen? amen? So we're just going to pray this prayer. And just pray it with me, and then I'm going to have these guys take and pray with you a little bit, little bit more when we're done, all right? So say, Father God, Father God in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, I ask you to forgive me. I know I'm a sinner, and I need Jesus as my Savior. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Take over my life. I freely give it to you tonight. In Jesus' name. Thank you for saving me. Amen. God's good. Woo, come on. Let's just, let's take them all over here and pray. Now, I want to tell you something. The best thing to do next week is bring your swimming trunks. Because that pool is going to be filled up for next week for baptisms again. Let's get your water baptized. Stand up and make a public confession and get her done, all right? Cool deal? Why don't you take them all over here and just pray with them real quick, all right? Come on, let's give them a big hand. What are we doing here? Yeah! <laughs> Mr. Nick, we ready? Yeah. All right. Come on down. I did. Yesterday. Well, it was yesterday, but that's all right. See, that's not that bad. Look at that. All right, so tell them your name. My name's Amber Martin. <laughs> I'm here because I want to be saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Amber, you love Jesus with all your heart? You love Jesus with all your heart? You. All right. So, Amber, it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're trying to knock her out back there. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Uh. All right, dear, tell them who you are. Rose Hagedon. Mm -hmm. To get saved in the love of Jesus. Amen. All right, you love Jesus with all your heart? You've asked him to come into your heart? 
Amen. All right, it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Is that it? I think we just need to leave that pool full. Where's Miss Gina at? So how many kids we got coming next week? Come on. Woo! Do you get that? 11 kids next week? If you ain't here to cheer these kids on next week, I'm ashamed of you all. No, not really. But we should all be here to cheer them on. Amen? God loves you. I love you. T, you going to play something for us? All right, let's do it. So when you're ready, we're going to sing some songs here. As you're ready, go ahead and head on out of here. And, uh, no, 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 don't pull the plug. Sonia's looking at me like. <laughs> all right, Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you and praise you for tonight. Thank you for all these wonderful people that got saved. Thank you for those who were baptized. Lord, I just pray that you just light everybody up on fire for the love of Jesus Christ. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You.